Hey everybody, Sean here, and welcome to Revealing Truth. And special thanks to Shane Waldron for sharing this one. The church we're looking at today is Abundant Life Center in New Zealand. The guest pastor speaking is Seth Fawcett. And what we're going to see today is more nar nonsense. And that's why it says, keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Because otherwise we'll get distracted in the middle of the journey here. As Kristen says, are we doing all right tonight? It's just about going to get interesting. And how does he know the interesting weirdness is about to happen unless he's doing it himself? Yes, keep your eyes on Jesus, not what we're about to see. It's just about going to get interesting. Because there's a promise going to be fulfilled in this part. part. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Do you know what that's going to look like? Well, I'm pretty sure it's not like the crunches we just saw, because how does God get any glory from that? What's the main street of, of Dunedin? George. Eh? George, George Street, I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. Can you imagine that every person you walk past in George Street has had the Spirit of God poured out on them? Well, Acts 2.17, referring to Joel's prophecy, says that people will prophesy, have visions and dreams. It doesn't say everybody's going to be doing the crunches that we'll see next. Either the Word of God is true, but what does the Bible say? Let God be true and every man a liar. We've got to learn to say what the Bible says is truth, that he's going to pour out his spirit upon everybody. We're in for something that this world has never yet seen because the end of the journey is nearly upon us. And he's made these promises. Is that what God promised? And he's made these promises. Yes, please. We got you. I'd be calling a doctor if that happened to my pastor, not celebrating it as something God was doing. We got you. That's boring. <laughs> oh. We're coming to a time as unbelief is increasing on the earth. I've got to be honest, unbelief is increasing on the earth. But Jesus said, my glory is rising. Whoa. What is glory? Glory is... Oh, just very quickly, glory in Scripture is Moses said, show us your glory. And God said, I'm going to show you my goodness. Well, what we're seeing here is not God's glory or goodness. What if you'd brought someone to church for the first time and that's what they saw? How would that draw them to God in any way? Guess what the goodness does? It brings people to repentance. So we're going to see an ingathering of souls because the glory is rising. Oh, wow. But what's happening here ain't bringing anyone to repentance. But what did Jesus say in John 14? If you're not going to believe what I say, believe because of the miracles. And therefore we can expect a whole bunch of miracles, signs and wonders. Because what happened in the early church was the miracles, signs and wonders. That's how the church grew. That by the year 200, over half of the Roman Empire population were Christians. Through miracles, signs, and wonders. Whoa. Let me tell you, nobody became repentant of their sinful lives and got saved by seeing anything that we're seeing right now. They got saved because the gospel was preached. And so, 
on the day of Pentecost, Peter said, listen to this, Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited to you. That means demonstrated as being true by miracles, wonders, and signs. That's our evidence, people. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Every move of God has been disruptive, disturbing to religion, and distracting to humanity. But it's glorious to those that are aligned by the Spirit. Whoa! But you grunting and groaning like you're about to soil yourself isn't any miracle or sign or wonder we saw in the Bible. It's the nonsense we see only in the New Apostolic Reformation. In a few minutes when we lay hands on you, some stuff's going to happen. I can hardly wait. As Christian was so magnificently talking about the temple. Come on, boys, up. <laughs> How you going, old man? Oh, like a man. <laughs> when did going to church and worshipping God become such a blasphemous comedy routine? <laughs> I'm so cheeky. Nothing wrong with that number. Don't be a person who's just an observer. That you're happy to sit and see. There's nothing that you get by sitting and seeing. It can enter. It was just da 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 Demonstrating that last night. Demonstrating what last night? I mean, you want to laugh at such absolute stupidity. And let's be honest, it's hard not to. But this is serious because so many people are being deceived into thinking this is a move of the Holy Spirit. And I assure you that it's not because this makes someone representing God look like a total clown. In a few minutes, we're going to lay hands on you. You're going to get some touch. Every one of you will. It'll be different for different people, but you will get touched. Because we know what the anointing is. You can feel it. You can, it's substance. 1 John 2.27 tells us that the anointing we received came from God, and that's the Holy Spirit. We don't receive an anointing from anyone today by laying hands. How can we? How can we receive the Holy Spirit from someone if we already have the Holy Spirit? And there's nothing in the Bible about receiving an anointing and then acting all goofy and unholy afterwards. So let's just jump to the end because it's just more jokes and nonsense until that point anyways. He wants to fill you to his measure, not your measure. Come Holy Spirit, as we come here tonight, that each one will be filled to the measure of your fullness. Oh. Not their limits, but your fullness. Oh. And that you, Holy Spirit, will dwell in them. But if they're saved, the Holy Spirit already dwells in them. You know, the first person I cast a demon out of was myself. <laughs> I'd heard about it and I said, Lord, I don't want anything that's not you. That makes no sense whatsoever. The only way you can cast a demon out of someone is if you do have the Holy Spirit in you. But if you're casting a demon out of yourself, then it means the Holy Spirit in you is not powerful enough to keep demons out. So demons keep coming back and you cast them out and this cycle just goes on for the rest of your life? Whatever happened to John 8, 36? And if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in these next few minutes. Whoa. We need some catchers here too. We've got some catchers. We need more than one catcher. Can we get a few other catchers? It's going to be quite fast. Look, this is going to happen really quick. Some more catchers here if we can get them. Come here. Come here. Quick. Fire. <laughs> Fire! Shukunondo! Fire! Calabashan! 
Shinoda Mas. Shikundo. Come closer, come closer. Come a wee bit closer. Oh, row, but closer. That's it. Shikundo no. Come on. Better before the party started. <laughs> Fire! And just look at all those people that are being led to believe that this is a move of God. Again, I ask you, how is God being glorified here in any way? He isn't. This is typical NAR nonsense and focuses on what you can get from God rather than what you can do for God. There are apparently many Abundant Life Centers in New Zealand, and if they all operate like this, then it's just one more group to mark and avoid. We're gonna leave it here for today, but leave your comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless.